Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and control a servo with an ESP32 microcontroller. And if you've ever used an Arduino to control a servo before, it's similar, but it's got a few new wrinkles. I've got a few projects that I want to tackle with the ESP32 microcontroller using servos to accomplish a few different things and working some controls in in order to make the whole system work. But in researching and seeing what's required, I realized that to control a servo with an ESP32, it's different than with an Arduino. So I did some research, I tested it all out, and I'm going to show you here how to set up the servo, wire it properly, configure the Arduino IDE software, in order to work with the ESP32 servo library, and then some of the extra parameters that you need to do, and the settings that you can use to dial it in, calibrate it so it's all ready to go for your next project. Without further ado, let's get started. For this project, we're gonna use the ESP32. If you don't know how to set it up with Arduino IDE, check out the video that I have linked here above. Also gonna need a servo. This is a hobbyist servo. It doesn't really matter what kind, but the one I'm using is the cheapest one I had from a hobby kit. Also be using a breadboard to lay out the components and some jumper wires of differing colors. I use the same color as the ones being used on the servo, but it's not really necessary. One of the big differences for the ESP32 compared to an Arduino is that the logic is all 3.3 volts and servos require 4.8 to 7.2 volts and work great on 5 volt. Or you could get away with using the Arduino 5 volt output in a pinch or for very small servos, we're definitely going to need a 5 volt power supply. The easiest way to get one is use a USB block and cable from a phone or other type device. The one I'm using here has two USB ports and up to 2.4 amps per port which is perfect to control multiple servos and it'll give us lots of flexibility for the future. With the two ports, we can also plug in the ESP32 separately and the servo at the same time. I'm gonna cut apart a USB cable. It doesn't really matter what is on the other end as long as the type A end that plugs into a USB port is on one end, we're gonna cut the other end off. Start by simply cutting that end off. You could cut it off anywhere along the cable, but I want to leave as much length as possible for plug-in sake. Depending on your situation, you might want to shorten it up. And we're going to remove the shielding here as we're not going to use it. And we're going to cut off both the yellow and green wires as they're for data and we're not going to be using them with the simple power that we need. That leaves only the black and the red. So I'm going to strip the insulation off of the conductors and then twist the strands together. You want to practice this a little bit so that you're not breaking any of the strands as you strip the wire and you're going to get the full opacity of the conductors. With the leads stripped and twisted, we're now going to tin them with some solder. This is a pretty simple process. You're simply going to well up a bunch of solder on the tip and then run it back and forth over the leads. But you really want to make sure in this case that you're using a solder that comes with flux. The type of flux in this particular solder I'm using is an RA flux and the flux is what causes it to bond properly to these stranded wires because of the coatings that are sometimes on them. If you don't use the flux, you'll find that you'll go back and forth over it time and time again and the solder just won't stick. But if you've used flux and if you add a little more solder as necessary, you'll find they tin beautifully. You might find that you need to clip the ends of them because the solder tends to pull up on the ends of the wire. Clip them a little bit and then they should fit nicely into a breadboard. For the sake of wiring the servo, it comes with three different wires and they can be different colors depending on the manufacturer. The center pin is the 5 volt pin, it's usually red. The ground is connected to one of the outer wires, which is usually brown or black, and the remaining wire is orange, white, yellow, I've seen it a bunch of different colors, and that's gonna be the signal wire. Now, we need to make sure that we're gonna supply our five volt power supply to the power and ground, and then the signal wire is gonna be connected. In this case, I'm gonna use pin two of the ESP32. We also need to tie the ground of the ESP32 to the ground of the five volt power supply. Otherwise, we're not gonna have two complete circuits. We'll only have the complete five volt circuit. As we lay it out on the breadboard, you wanna be careful with the ESP32. Because it's so wide, it only allows one row of pins to be used. So we wanna use the one that's going to allow us to work through all the jumpers on one side. And then to connect our servo, we're gonna use those three pins. Power pin, I'm going to put into one of the positive rails on the breadboard. And the ground, I'm going to put into the negative terminal or the negative rail on the breadboard. 
And then I'm going to connect the signal wire, in this case orange, to the number two terminal on the ESP32. Connect the ground, as I said, from the ESP32 to the negative rail of the breadboard. And that's all the connecting we need for the microcontroller. The last step is simply to connect the positive and negative from our five volt power supply to the rails of the breadboard in order to give the servo itself the power that it needs to move and to have the right amount of torque. In the end, you're gonna have one USB cable that's gonna power the servo and the other one that's gonna be connected to the ESP32. As I mentioned before, that's the benefit of having the dual port USB power supply. With all the connections out of the way, it's time to get the Arduino working. And the Arduino, by default, even once you've set up the board manager, is not going to contain the usual servo library that it does for an Arduino controller. And that's because with the ESP32, there's a little difference in how the analog writing works and the PWM of the pins. So you need to go to the library manager and install the ESP32 servo library. Click the more info for the library, you'll actually find the information for the default servo library, which isn't correct. It's not the servo.h library, it's the ESP32 servo.h library. And so when you look at these examples, you'll actually find the wrong code, the code instead for the default library. To find the correct code, once you've installed the library, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see the ESP32 servo library which has the same samples, knob and sweep, and also has a few others. Here I'm gonna just be showing the sweep function. So I'm gonna open up that example. I'm just gonna delete all of this acknowledgement code because it's not necessary to focus in on what we're doing here. Though the people that created it, we are grateful to them. As you can see, you use the ESP32 servo.h library, and then you declare a servo instance, in this case called my servo. You need a variable for the position, and you need to set the pin. In this case, the default was 18, but I'm gonna choose pin two. And then we don't need to adjust any of these timers. They're set up because that's what the ESP32 needs in order to accomplish PWM or analog control of the pins, but we don't need that part. I'm just gonna adjust the note here to show also pin two, and you can see some information about the initial setup and the settings changes that you might need to dial in the servo. The loop function runs two different for loops. The first one is set up to start from a position of zero degrees, and then as long as the degree stays under 180 or equal to it, it's going to increment by one every time it completes the loop. For the actual loop instructions, it's gonna write the angle position, and then it's going to delay 15 milliseconds. Next time through, it's gonna be incremented once, so it'll, it'll add one degree and delay another 15 milliseconds. Every 15 milliseconds, it'll move another degree. When it gets to 180, it'll break the loop and it'll start the second for loop, which runs from 180 down to zero, removing one degree at a time every time through the for loop. When it's completed both of those, it returns to the start of the loop, which initiates the initial ramp up loop and starts the whole process over again. The end result is that the servo arm will swing from zero to 180 degrees perpetually. If we test it out here, once we upload the sketch and run it, you can see that it is indeed sweeping back and forth. However, it's only operating close to 90 degrees instead of our expected 180 degrees. These cheap servos don't often go all the way to 180, but it should be getting much closer than that. And so we need to adjust some of those default settings. As you can see here, when you're attaching the servo, you're also gonna set the default values for the minimum and maximum. After playing around with this, I wouldn't suggest adjusting more than 100 at a time because you can exceed the limits of the servo and stress it out. I found that a minimum value of 500 and a maximum value of 2200 gave me as big of a spread as I could get. And when we run the sketch again, you can see now we are getting much closer to 180 degree sweep. What you will notice is that though I'm getting a 180 degree sweep, the arm is not necessarily in a position that I would want to use. For the sake of this example, I'd like the arm to be in the center of the servo body when it's at 90 and then perpendicular to that on both the zero and 180. So let's dial that in a little bit by changing our code. I'm gonna comment out the sweep functionality and instead I'm gonna write in a command that actually causes the servo to move to the 90 degree position. Now the actual sprocket or or shaft of the servo is going to move to the 90 degree position, but the arm that I installed isn't necessarily in the right place. In this case, it's definitely not in the right place. We'll upload that sketch, and as it takes effect, you'll see here that it moves to a position that's off of what I want it to be. Because I haven't screwed the servo arm down yet, I'm simply gonna pop up the arm with a set of side cutters, and then I can place it down again exactly where I want it to be. 
Depending on your application, this may or may not be necessary, depending if you're using the full 180 degree sweep and also where you need your starting and stopping positions to be. I adjusted it a couple times to get it close to what I wanted it, but in the end, like I say, it really depends on your own application. After getting that 90 degree position locked down, I'm again going to comment out my new command and remove the comment tags from the original script, which now means when we upload this 180 degree sweep, we should be getting the sweep in its full range and also in the correct orientation, with the center being the middle of the servo body. As you can see, that accomplished that very well, and now the servo moves as intended. Of course, if you don't need the full 180 degree movement, you can always start and stop those four loops in different places so that it'll sweep between two values that you need it to, or add any other number of controls and complexities to it to get the motion to be exactly what you need at the speed that you need it. If you want to see a bunch of different variables that you can apply to a servo to make it perform differently, I'll include a great link to the DroneBot Workshop channel and a, a video that they did on servos and Arduino. Now that we've got the basic functionality dialed in, let me show you a couple of the options that you can do. One of the ways to speed up the progression would be to change the delay to a lower number or if you wanted to slow it down. By making that delay shorter, it's gonna make those steps faster. And as you can see, it does improve the speed of the servo by about a third. If we were to change that to only five milliseconds, we're now three times faster than we were with our original code at 15 milliseconds. And you should be able to see that more dramatically if we upload the code. Yes, you can see that the arm sweeps much quicker than before. That of course isn't the only way that you could change the code. You could set it back to 15 as the default and instead change how big those steps are gonna be in the for loops. So instead of one degree at a time, let's move it five degrees at a time, which will be five times faster than the original code instead of three times faster that we achieved by changing the delay. As you can see with the code uploaded, it moves way faster, five times faster than the original that we did. These are just a couple of the ways that you can manipulate the code to give you some ideas of the tweaks you can make in order to get the servo to do what you want it to do. That's if you want to use a sweep setup. If you want to move to specific positions at certain times, you can instead just supply different write commands with the angle that you want to move to and the servo will move to that location. For the sake of demonstration, I'll comment out that original sweep script and then activate this myservo.write command. I'll duplicate it a few times so that you can see the servo move to three different positions. And then we'll need to add some delay as well so that the servo has time to get to those places before the next command takes effect. Servos have ratings for how fast they can move between different degrees. The standard ratings are usually how fast it can move between 60 degrees. And in most cases, I think in this case, it's about 0.2 seconds for every 60 degrees. So it could make an entire revolution in about 1.2 seconds if indeed it could actually go that way because it can only move 180 degrees it would only take 0.6 of a second to do the full 180 degree sweep. I'm going to add a delay of half a second or 500 milliseconds which should give it plenty of time. If you give it more time than it requires it'll stutter and stop at each position. If you give it only the time it required, it will be a nice smooth function. As you can see here, we're getting a little pause at every location and that's because I put a little more delay than was actually necessary. Of course, we don't have to move over the entire 180 degree range. So here I'm just gonna change it to 45 and 90. So it'll move within the same 90 degrees back and forth, similarly to how it did with the 180 degree range. Just by changing a couple parameters, we get very different behavior. And these are the kind of behaviors that you can tweak in order to make your project do almost anything that you could possibly use. Add in all of the different horns and attachments that can be put on a servo. You can create so many different kinds of motion just with this one little device. It really is amazingly handy. 
So now you can see what's required to wire up the servo circuits properly, incorporate it with the 3.3 volt logic of the ESP32, and then how to update the libraries and use them in the software in order to control the servos correctly. It's a little simpler with the Arduino out of the box, but once you've done the work, it's just as easy and you get some of the extra benefits that we'll tackle in other videos, such as wireless control that are built into the ESP32 by default and that need expansion cards or hats when you use an Arduino. That's all you need to know to set up a servo, but keep checking back as I'll be posting more videos down the road that take that building block and add a bunch more to it. If you enjoy the videos that I'm making, please give them a like, subscribe to the channel and check back weekly as I post a new video every Saturday morning and leave us a comment to let us know what you like, what you don't, ideas for further projects, all those kinds of things. If you want to follow me on Twitter or send me an email, my information is in the description below. Until next time, in all your DIY tinkering, the ones that spin you right round and the ones that only go 0 to 180, don't be afraid to be balder.